There is a note in there also about decorating for Christmas. So, uh, I'll put it simply, uh, we have started. We've started decorating. And uh, there's nothing wrong with decorating for Christmas. Are you playing Christmas carols for Christmas now? Provided, of course, that the children understand that the excitement is for the baby Jesus. You're getting ready for the great coming of our Lord. And now then is the time to get ready to, for the little children to bring their little plants that they've been raising now for the last few days, a few weeks, of the grains of wheat that are growing, and that they will offer those to the baby Jesus. Get everything ready. There's no harm in doing that. There's nothing wrong with doing that. If you take that out, you will create a void. And the children will fill that void. Probably with things that you would rather them not to have. You fill the void with Christ. And the things that pertain to Christ. Even the decoration that pertains to Christ. Let it be joyful. Let it be beautiful. Let the house be made over in joy. Because the king is coming to see you. This is what the children must know and see and understand. And they will grow up with this. Look out for those children. Give them something that they will be able to have when they themselves become parents. Think of those awesome days, awful days, bad days. Teach them. Teach them to have something to hold on to, to pass it on to their children in days to come. My dear people, please pay attention and look at what is ahead of us, ahead of all of us. It's not good. In today's bulletin, on the front page, we have the, we printed out the, the great O Anaphons. First of all, incidentally, today is Rose Sunday, Gaudete Sunday. Rejoice, that's why we have the rose colored vestments. We on the altar have about every shade of pink that has been created by man, but that's the best that we've got, and that's the best that you will see. So, uh, at any rate, the great O Anaphons. Each one of these Anaphons, now as we prepare ourselves for the coming of the Christ child, for the coming of the central point of history. Men from all ages look forward to this one day. And believe it or not, and warning it or not, men ever since that day have looked back to it. Each day, beginning with the 17th of December, the great O Antiphon of Wisdom, O Wisdom, then there is the little prayer right underneath it. This is to be conducted officially and solemnly, and no foolishness is to be conducted by the father of the family, by the father of the house, and in his absence, by the mother of the house. The father says the prayer. That's your business. That's your affair. You say the prayer. And each day... You say one of those prayers, which takes you all the way up to the vigil of Christmas itself, which takes care of itself, and you will see what has to be done as time goes on. So each day there is a new coming, a new calling of him who we expect, of him who we are waiting for. Each day we cry out to him in our misery, and it is misery. And we cry out to him and ask him to protect us. If you live alone, 
that don't that don't uh, don't uh, uh, go out because don't uh, don't feel sorry or, or, or morose or sad because you are alone. Then you by yourself, if you live alone, cry out to God each day in a solemn manner, in a solemn fashion, and ask Him to come down. And to have mercy on you and bless you and bless those because you certainly have those for whom you wish to pray. Each day, this is a solemn moment each day and we recommend that it be done at the uh, solemn meal of the day, the main meal of the day. And make it for yourselves, even if you live alone. It's all right. Nothing wrong with that. You set the table for yourself, and your guest will be Jesus Christ himself. You want to go any higher than that? We have to look at him, and we have to believe him. We make a big deal about looking for faith. Yes, our Lord himself said, when I come back, well, I found faith on earth. I think that, my beloved people, we are at that moment now. We have, reached, we have arrived at that moment when that question can be very appropriately asked. Shall we say this? Except for certain little pockets of here and there and, and the small pockets of little gatherings here and little gatherings there. Where is faith? Where is faith? We celebrate Christmas. I think this year we're still celebrating it up to a certain point. I don't know to what extent we can or will be able to, depending on the circumstances of the moment. Where is faith today? Besides that, Let's interpret faith. What is faith? Always remember the little lady that approached him in the middle of a crowd and just touched the hem of his garment. She touched it. She was healed. Did he ask her any questions except one? Did he give her an examination? No. He merely said the one word that covers it all. And with the same word the identical word, beloved people, the identical word that each of you and each of us will be asked. Do you believe? And depending on your answer, Will you get your just reward? Depending on our answer, will we get our just reward? Today, there's every variety of whatever that our earth can possibly put together and the people therein. You must be, care be, uh, be careful. And, and be uh, prepared sufficiently to know the difference between that which is right and that which is wrong. You have every opportunity to believe, to read, that is presented to you in your weekly bulletins very carefully and very particularly scrutinized that there can be no mistake about what is presented there for you to help you to help you in guiding your children 
the way that is properly done at this time of the year. We must protect and preserve and hand on our holy religion. And as long as you're there, as long as we're here, with God's help and other places likewise, that we will be there to hang on, to hold on to our religion, no matter what. At the point of a gun, you may have to. We may have to. If you want to get ready for this, read some of the lives of those mothers and fathers who have seen their children slaughtered and butchered at their very faces, but they nobody moved. They said no. Not one grain of incense. Are you ready? for that possibility those are dreadful dreadful questions am I ready and only by way of prayer only by way of mortification and sacrifice and blessing those are the ways of preparation. Everything else put aside. Today is Rejoice Sunday. You see the flowers on the altar. You see the rose-colored vestments. The church says, take time out. Rejoice and be glad. Because he is coming. A momentary a momentary uh, 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 incident. It comes and it goes like a storm. But for whatever we have to give up, for whatever we have to do, the reward for that is beyond ex uh, description. Up to the present time, we have been uh, placing in our bulletin the magnificent little dis, uh, study on prayer. We had to interrupt it because of, of all the things of Christmas that are coming up. And it'll be a few more uh, weeks before we get back to it. And when that's done, I will present to you in the bulletin something that is most beautiful. We will be reading about peace. Peace to men of good will. Not good will to men, but to men of good will. The good will that will be taken up in next week's bulletin, you will begin to get little words about this. The word good will depends upon what is in your heart, our hearts, what is in our hearts. If we do not have, if we do not foster, if we do not develop good will, after all, what was the first uh, announcement of the angels after the birth of Christ when they appeared to the shepherds? Good will to men of peace. Most people today do not even have the slightest inkling of goodwill. And they go out and they tear open the front door of their homes and they go out as they spread hatred and lying and deceit and everything else that comes from the fire of hell. You, my beloved people, at least even just in your own homes, Peace to men of good will. That's where it is. And with good will, we can approach God Almighty without fear. 
and trepidation. So, this sounds gloomy. Well, it is gloomy. But, when you see that which is in the, in the little stable, all gloom goes away. The shepherds were full of question. They wanted to see what this thing was that they had heard about. And they ran in the darkness of the night. Cold, very likely, because it was, after all, in the cold part of the year. And when they arrived, they worshipped. The wise men, they traveled great distances. No doubt they were very much... Uh, of, of, talked about and coerced and argued with why are you going to do this crazy fool thing that you are speaking of they were determined they went when they came to the place yes they were very much surprised at finding the location and the condition of that location that he who was the king that they were told, that they knew about, that they'd read about, that they'd studied about, was in such poor condition. And on entering, they found him. And without any word spoken, without a single word spoken, they fell on their knees and adored. They were not told, now you're coming here, uh, do this, do that, don't do this, don't do that. There was not a word spoken. The grace of God was in their minds and in their hearts. And they instinctively knew exactly what to do. And they did it. And so will you. This, my beloved people, fathers and mothers... This you give to your children. They are growing up with that horrible instrument that presents them with absolutely anything and everything their little minds might fall and stumble upon. They even have little instruments that now they can merely hold in their hands. And whatever it is they're looking for, they do not have to go to the store to buy it. They do not have to go and hide about here, there, and everywhere. It's in their hand. And by a simple push of the button, they can find whatever it is they're looking for. But who buys those things for them? Who buys them? Can a five, six, seven year old child go to a store and make the purchase? Who buys those things? And somehow the parents have got to give them something that they can put in their minds that supersedes and is above that which presents to them the fire of hell. You, in your own way, beloved parents, not in a way that will cause your children to, th to think foolishness about it, but in a way, and you get ingenious, and you get smart, and you can find ways of proving to your children that that which you give to them is superior and better and more beautiful and more wonderful than anything they can find elsewhere. That's your business and you must do it. And they must have that training so that their day is coming and they will have to do the same thing to their own children. It all depends on us right now.
May you be blessed as always, I tell you. May you be blessed in a very special manner. Because the beauty that is in your hearts and minds and souls and homes and houses is more beautiful than you can find. I know any other place in the world it is there protected blessed people before all things protected it is there and when you protect what are you protecting yes you are protecting him who made it so beautiful <laughs>